All right, everybody, welcome to The Big Picture. I'm your host, I'm your co-host, Larry Ragland. Tonight is The Big Picture Live. We've got a lot of ground to cover. One of the greatest, most prolific, some people would even say dark architects of the world has left this world at the age of 100. We'll cover the death of Henry Kissinger. We'll also cover what's going on in Israel. The war is back on in Gaza. We're going to give you some news, some updated news on Ukraine. Some major, major AI news has happened this week as well. Tonight on The Big Picture, hit that like button, share, and invite some people. Let's do this. All right, all right. I'm going to bring her on in right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. The queen is back. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes. Great to be back. And she is feeling much better. Thank you for all your prayers. Yes. They've been praying for you, baby. I have felt the prayers, and I have needed them very much. So I really, really appreciate that, and uh, I thank everyone. Absolutely. Well, we're excited to get into the news tonight. Yes, we are. Uh, We've got a lot of ground to cover, and Mm. right off the bat here, you know, this is this gentleman here. We have, it's big. Yeah, we have discussed him on many, many occasions. Yes, we have. I I uh, forwarded th- this to you at the moment I got it because mm, I was like, wow, yes. yeah. oh my goodness. I mean, this man made it to a hundred years old. <laughs> he sure and, did. And just a few months ago, he was in China. Exactly. Okay. So like he, you said, you used the word architect. Yes. So Henry Kissinger has died at the age of a hundred. Most people know that he died in his home in Connecticut. Um. Let's read a little bit of this article. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, a key figure in shaping U.S. foreign policy during uh, the 20th century, has died at the age of 100. Mr. Kissinger died in his home in Connecticut on November 29th. A German-born American diplomat, he served as Secretary of State for two presidents. While serving under Republican President Richard Nixon in the 70s, Mr. Kissinger played a key role in maintaining significant global events. Mr. Kissinger, and I forgot to do this right here. Let me do this so we don't get in trouble on our streaming. So while you're doing that, um, I know you're going to read some more of this article. He is the one in one of the movies about Nixon where Nixon asked him to pray with him. Mm. Is is that correct? I don't know. Uh, Yes. I I wish I could remember the movie where Nixon got down on his knees in the floor and then it uh, stands. Kissinger prayed with him? Well... What he, God did he pray to? I'm pretty, I'm 90% sure it was him in the movie. Okay. And uh, when Nixon asked him if he would pray with him, he just looked really weird towards mm. him. Like, I, I don't, I don't do that. I don't know about that. But I think it was Nixon. I think it was Kissinger. So That's interesting. Yeah. You know what else is interesting? I just happened to glance over the live chat and I'm seeing a bunch of roll ties. That's all I want to say. Uh, yeah. Roll tie. Big weekend. Roll mm, tie. I'm just going to say. <coughs> roll tie. A lot of controversy. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> to, all, to all our Florida State fans, we love you. You're just, you're an important part of the big picture family. Yes, you are. <laughs> we do love you. We do love you. Uh, Let's scroll back up and yeah. read that quote at the top of this article because I have some quotes to go along with it. The quote? Mm, where is what, what are you talking about? Okay. Maybe I was looking at another article. But uh, let me just read some of these. Okay. This is the quote, a similar quote that I thought I was reading. Uh, and there are many <laughs> controversial quotes attributed right. to Come him. Come on, bring it. Uh, control oil and you control nations. Control food and you mm. control people. Get this, the illegal we do immediately, the unconstitutional takes a little longer. Wow. Now, now let me ask you something. That sounds awful familiar to me. Mm-hmm. That sounds like Klaus Schwab. Was he not the one that got Klaus Schwab here? We, right. We, we already we, talked yeah, about yeah, that he, Kissinger recruited He recruited Schwab. Schwab. Right. So, so listen to this. Democracy is not democracy is too important to leave up to the votes of people. Wow. And this one, world population needs to be decreased by 50 percent. Wow. So um, we know that this person hmm. uh, was a power broker. He was an architect. Many believe he's responsible for the deaths of multiplied millions. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they say he's the architect of what happened in uh, Vietnam and uh, many yeah. uh, corporate bombings that happened and so forth. And, you know, we, we don't ever want to speak ill of those that are dead. No. But the reality is this. Um, the truth is, you know, come on. Henry Kissinger was 
a mover and shaker in yes. the world of the elite. Yes. He, as you said, he recruited to America. Mm. And, and and I can't remember off the top of my head the name of the original name of the World Economic for, uh, Forum before it became that. And it was named by William Kissinger. Henry. He's, uh, huh? Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Yeah, Henry right. Kissinger. He's the one that named it and, and personally recruited. Think about this now. The mouth of of the narrative of the world now, yes. which is Klaus Schwab. He's basically what we would call in church world spiritual son. He's like a spiritual son of Henry Kissinger. Absolutely. Did Kissinger not come from Germany him, yes, himself? Yes, he was born in Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany. And they said he came over here shortly to escape uh, Nazism, mm -hmm. uh, to escape Hitler and so forth. But, you know, like I said, you know, who, you know, you never want to mm. talk about somebody's eternity, things like that, because... The grace of God, I'm going to tell you, it covers a multitude of sins. And I'm it telling is. you, you it call does. out on God at the last minute, I still believe God, is able, his grace is sufficient. Yes. Uh, but we're not talking about what happened to him at the very end. We're talking about the life that he lived yes. and the legacy that he leaves behind. And Henry Kissinger. <laughs> or the damage he did. The damage he did. About his life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's curious to me that I know he was 100 years old and we... <laughs> You know, we couldn't expect him to probably live much longer than that. But it is curious that uh, certain people are passing away, and it's like a changing yeah. of the guard. It's really like a is. turning of the corner. And I go back to, I think it was the middle of uh, last year, when the destruction of the Georgia Guidestones took mm -hmm. place. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't believe that was Joe Don uh, <laughs> yeah. acting out in yeah. a fit of rage. I believe the destruction of that monument was a marker mm. in time. Wow. And the death of Kissinger and some other people, I believe yeah. that they are a marker in time for us. Well, you know, you just start talking <laughs> about symbolism. A hundred years, a century. Yes. You know, you're talking about this man has lived through a lot of stuff. And, yes. you know, I don't want to go down too big of a rabbit hole here, but a lot of people's you got all kinds of theories about how he lived that long. And, you know, that, sure. you know, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is this. Not just him, but <laughs> many, many yeah, others. Many others. And uh, But the thing that's wild is you think about it. Do you think most people in the world at age 100, he was 99, I think. He might have already been 100 when he flew to China and sit down with Xi Jinping. I mean, he he had to know. I mean, I'm, I'm 100 years old. I'm going to be dead soon. I mean, what did he talk to him about? Exactly. What was that? What was the exactly. conversation so important that Henry Kissinger had to fly to China at yeah. 100 right. and sit down and talk to right. the leader of the world's communist regime? Exactly. Well, let's don't be so weirdo and cryptic, but what of um, the election... I can't remember. It was it uh, the 2020 election when so many people of note had to fly to Antarctica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Kerry, Kirill from Russia, John from the Kerry. Orthodox Church. Uh, I think maybe the Pope went there. Yeah, uh, but it's like the, and many others. The holy city is Beijing now to to the mm. to that elite world because. Think about all the people that's went to China or met with him. True. And, you know, he just came here to America and met with our president. Yes. We had the <clears> president <throat> of North Korea traveling yep. there. We had Vladimir Putin traveling mm -hmm. there. We had Henry Kissinger traveling there. And then we keep telling you that all of our intelligence keeps telling us we're going to be at war with them. Look but yet, out. but they were si he was sitting in the ta at a table in San Francisco, California, <laughs> just a couple of weeks ago, and in that room was the leader of yeah. BlackRock, the leader of AT and T, the leader of, of Charter Cable, the president of Chase Manhattan. I mean, every, all the most powerful people in the world of leading every industry yeah. there is, sitting in whining and dining exactly. with someone that. We're, they're saying we're going to yeah. be at war with. Let's take note of all of these special meetings with people of note and these um, even more important uh, word that I would point out is alignments yeah. with countries, yeah. with corporations, with individuals, with leaders. Well, one of the things that Henry Kissinger reportedly <clears throat> said almost on his deathbed, well, it went on his deathbed, it was his last interview, which was just about two weeks ago with somebody, and I mean, this was surprising to me. Two two things that jumped out in that interview, and you can find it very easily, but by researching his final interview, Henry Kissinger's final interview, 
you'll see that he said two things of promise. Number one, he said that America, because they're talking about China, he said, what should we do about China? He said, America must reconcile with China. That was his words. America must <laughs> reconcile with China. I couldn't believe he said that. Exactly and, what does that mean? Exactly. And the second thing he said, which was very shocking, he said, you need to move on from the two-state solution in Israel. It will not happen. You need to let Jordan, let them go and live in Jordan. He literally said in the interview, you need to move on from the two-state solution. Okay. That was, that was wild, and that was in his last interview. Now, speaking of Israel— you know, Israel had just just came through uh, the momentary pause, uh, which you know I think people who support Israel was thinking, you know, this is not going to be good for them. You know, the 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 public being behind them, they're they're turning so fast against Israel. But Israel Israel is just determined they're going to finish the job supposedly. So they've begun uh, returning to bombing Israel. And uh, so I want to read this article here. Israel says it is expanding its ground operations against Hamas strongholds across the whole of the Gaza Strip as IDF continues to bomb territories after terrorists broke fragile truce. Let me zoom this in just a little bit. Mm. Um, it says the Israeli military says it's expanding its ground operations. Uh, Israel continued to folk, uh, to con bomb swaths of territory on Sunday, killing and wounding dozens of Palestinians with civilians seeking sh shelter in shrinking areas of the south. So, so they're expanding to the south now. And one of the things that I saw is that it, it surprised Hamas because a lot of the they're, – they're forcing many of the Palestinian citizens to stay in yep. the north, but their, their terrorist leaders have evacuated to the south. And uh, they thought, well, we'll just get down here in the south while they're bombing the north, and we'll recuperate. And Israel went down to the south and surprised them and began to bomb them in the south. Uh, so they're beginning to show the tunnels throughout the north and the south. So, so escalation has begun again, Sandy. And do um, we know how successful they've been in destroying the infrastructure of all of these tunnels? Because there were over a billion, one or two billion dollars supposedly spent in construction construction of these tunnels. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, you never know what you can believe in the, the videos that you see. But from what I'm seeing, uh, Amir Safadi, that we trust very much, mm -hmm. reporting from the ground there. And some others are saying they've been very successful. I but, hope so. But they're they're saying it's going to take months and months to to. You would think it's so. so intricate. You would think so, and of course the talk is, you know, no one believes that all of these hostages. Yeah. Are alive. No, no. I don't know how what percentage have been released to this point, but it would stand to reason that probably many of. I don't know how I don't know how many, but probably yeah. there were torture and killing of at least a portion of them because that's just the nature. Yeah, and and coinciding with the them resuming um, combat operations, destruction of Hamas, as well as going now to the south, they begin to release videos uh, of the horrible things that happened to the women and how that they were sexually abused and how they were videoed. Horrific, horrific things. Of course, I've not seen them, but I've read people that uh, articles from people that have seen them uh, where they. I don't know how you can watch that. Yeah, 10, 15, 20 men abusing one woman and then killing her. And it's just, you know, these are videos that, you know, people would deny that these things happen. And then Israel is saying, we didn't want to have to show you this, but let me just show you the, the, the terrorists' own phone footage that they recorded this for posterity. <sighs> And uh, and when people see it, they just don't know what to believe. But we got we got senators in the United States of America mm. that are confronted about what happened to these women, and these are supposed women's rights people and all this. They will not condemn Hamas for doing that because it is just against the narrative. Yeah. I'm telling it's you, disgusting. it's it's disgusting. And I'm gonna tell you what more, more than more it is it's demonic. Yep. It's purely demonic. I mean, this this is a spiritual mm. thing that is going on. Sure. Now, this is not just a natural boundary thing. This is a spiritual plan that's going on. No matter where you stand, whether you're yep. a Zionist, anti-Zionist, and all this kind of stuff, I don't understand how anybody cannot see that this is a spiritual Correct. attack. 
This, this goes all the way back to Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau. It's been going on yes. that long. And the speed at which this unfolded of um, the taking of sides, especially yeah. on the college the college, college camp- campuses, oh, my goodness. in the streets with the demonstration, the flags, all the groups of people. I, I was astounded how fast yeah. that we had people in our country, uh, around the world, but in our country especially, yeah. stand up Come on. for the evil and, and support. What what or what is happening in our colleges? What is happening in our entire country? In our entire in the entire world. But yes. but but mamas and daddies, listen, you, y'all got to really pray it nowadays if you're gonna send your kids to college. Because I'm telling you, we see we see it in our church, yes. we see it in families here where kids are they love the Lord, they've been yes. raised in, in to serve God, they love their country, and they get a scholarship or something, and the family's so happy they go off to college and within a year. They come back. They already don't believe in God anymore. They they don't want to. They think that that yeah. that the church is the problem with the whole world. That God, the concept of God, is the problem. Now they are anti-Israel. All this kind of stuff. What is happening? What are they teaching? It is an infiltration. It is a. Mm. Some of that is even creeping into the actual church. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it really is. It's unbelievable. It really is. You know, it's it's sad that we. Cannot understand how to be that effective. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. All so, so uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken uh, pushes for two state solution in the Middle East. Uh, rockets fired by Hamas triggered the end to a two to a week long pause. Yeah. By the way, let's just cover that. Mm-hmm. That what broke the week long pause was not Israel resuming operations. Hamas began to fire missiles again in the midst of when they were supposedly begging for a ceasefire. So mm-hmm. let's just make sure we understand that. Uh, a week-long pause in the Gaza fighting. In the early hours of Friday morning, the war restarted after Israel accused the terror group of violating the truce agreement. After Hamas began firing rockets into southern Israel, the Israel Defense Forces resumed bombing in Gaza City. The renewed fighting now puts the release of the remaining hostages on hold and during the halt in fighting, more than 100 hostages were free. On Thursday, 10 more Israeli hostages were, were released. Israel had wanted all the women and children to be set free. Yet with the resumption of the fighting and the breakdown in negotiations, the fate of nearly 140 remaining in captivity is unknown. On Friday, Israel said its troops had discovered the bodies of four more hostages in Gaza, bringing the total known dead to seven. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken left the region Friday morning after a day of meetings with Israeli and Palestinian leaders. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Blinken Israel's goals for the war. I told him this is the same Hamas. This is the same Hamas that carried out the terrible massacre in October 7th. The same Hamas that tries to murder us everywhere. I told him we swore and I swore to eliminate Hamas. Nothing will stop us. We will continue this war until we have achieved the three goals, to release all of our abductees, to eliminate Hamas completely, and ensure Gaza will never again face such a threat. And, of course, Blinken repeated the Biden administration's message that there should be fewer civilian deaths and and their experience in Gaza. Meanwhile, uh, Blinken gives Israel weeks, gives Israel weeks to finish the job of destroying Hamas. And, of course, he goes on to talk about that he has pushing that this must end in a two-state solution. And I've said it here, Sandy, and I'm going to say it again. Five occasions, at least five occasions, Israel has proposed a two-state solution. All five times the Palestinians said no. Mm-mm. We don't want a two-state solution. We want it all. Yep. And Thank you for that super chat, by the way, oh, TLG. Yes. Thank you. Thanks very much. If uh, Blinken in the United States is there right now with these statements— What's the next move? Yeah. What's our next move? What What is our next? We're going to up the ante. What next? Yeah, well, you know, what next? What next? And, and, you know, that's the question that has to be answered is what is the end game here? Yes. I mean, what, what that's is— That's where I'm getting. What's the end game? Yeah, so so you destroy yeah. Hamas, and, and, and what people don't want to hear is this is facts. This is just what's being reported. I think it's a higher number than this, but consistently 70% 
of Palestinian civilians completely support Hamas. Sure. 70 percent. Now, I think it's higher than that. But the reality is this. Hamas is a governing organization that the Palestinian people yeah. voted in. Yeah. And then Hamas did away with elections, and they no, <laughs> nobody can get, get rid of them now. <laughs> How convenient, right? Yeah. They're a so, bunch of terrorists. They don't mind using the civilians as shields, as cannon fodder. I guess these people live in total fear. Well, think, think, remind, I want to remind you that when they, when they uh, breach the wall, it is reported even by the Palestinian terrorists that were captured and inter interrogated and video evidence that they broke the wall. Then the terrorist leaders retreated back into Gaza and told the citizens, the Palestinian citizens, grab whatever you can and go that get as true. many Jewish people as you can. We've so heard that so, so I'm not times. I'm not trying to speak down to the Palestinian people because I know there's innocent people there, but there's also you can't don't believe the narrative that there's not this overwhelming majority of hatred, hatred towards yeah. towards the Jewish people that they don't want a two-state solution. They do not want to live peaceably alongside of Israel. They believe that Israel is an occupier of land. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But I love that meme that I saw. The whole world right now is about to celebrate a baby uh, that was born who was a Jew, who was born in Bethlehem and was raised as a Jew. And his name is Jesus. But yet the world wants us to believe that they've only been living there since 1948. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But think about the irony of that. Yep. That's You're just, right. it's just unbelievable. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's unbelievable. Wow. So we don't know where it's going. Uh, it's escalating all around. Uh, the Houthi rebels are, are also escalating. Uh, escalation Houthis uh, have attacked this week three U.S. commercial mm -hmm. ships. Uh, U.S. Warships, uh, warship shoots down three drones, uh, blames Iran, and will consider all appropriate responses. The United States claims it was attacked today by Houthi uh, forces in the Red Sea and is now warning that they are considering their next plan of response in what could potentially escalate the regional Israeli-Hamas war into something much broader. Uh, so four attacks— against three separate commercial vessels operating in international waters in the Southern Red Sea. These vessels are connected to 14 separate nations. Uh, at approximately 9.15, the Kearney detected an anti-ship ballistic missile attack fired from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen towards these different ships. Uh, and it says, at approximately 12 p.m., while in international waters, Carney engaged and shot down a UAV launched from the Houthi-controlled area in Yemen. The drone was headed towards the Carney along its specific target. is not clear. We cannot access blah, blah, blah. It says, um, and then it goes on to detail all the different attacks. So, so you know, there are, nobody's reporting on this. They're just they're trying to make it all about Israel, what Israel is doing hmm. to innocent civilians but yet you have the Houthi rebels, you have uh, the uh, Hezbollah that's been firing attack. They've never stopped firing missiles. And then you've got Syria that's threatening. You've got Iran that's threatening. Uh, it is, And then you've got the powerful forces of the world bringing their most powerful ships ever and yes. parking them right outside. So many from so many parts of the world. Thank you, DRW, for that super sticker. Yes, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that very Appreciate much. Appreciate it, super sticker. You, you're the man. Thank I you, can't thank imagine you. the uh, th the tensions that are just mounting in that whole region with so many uh, countries being represented. Yes, absolutely. And uh, thank you for all mm -hmm. the super chats, the super stickers. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you to our partners that have partnered with us. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. You, you just don't even know what you mean to us. Absolutely. And uh, real quickly, we'll just touch on this. Uh, this past this past weekend, we just had a an amazing time with. Many of the people that believe in our ministry that are yes. we consider family. We had two big book signing events uh, for our for our book. I see greatness in you. And if you have not got a copy of that, all you got to do is go to our website, LarryRaglin.com, and you'll see right there when you get to LarryRaglin.com or LarryRaglin.tv, you'll see all uh, opportunity to go to all our previous shows that we've had. You can become a partner with us there, uh, one time or a monthly partner. You can read our article from the Epic Times, watch our TV show. Get a copy of our book. All of it is right there on LarryRaglin.com. And uh, 
man, it just blesses us so much to know that you're with us. Yes. And we had such a great, great time at our book signing, and we'd love to sign one for you. Uh, but so, Sandy, uh, but <clears throat> there's more stuff going on than just in Israel. Absolutely. There's stuff going on in the cosmos. <laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, Standeo is is the Ooh. prolific one to talk about what's been, but some crazy stuff been going on with the sun, yeah. and uh, this is this is just coming out this week. Physicists are warning that Earth's magnetic field could completely flip soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> the Earth's magnetic field plays a big role in protecting people <gasps> from hazardous radiation and geomagnetic activity that could affects satellite communications and the operation of power grids, and it moves. Scientists have studied and tracked the motion of the magnetic poles for centuries. The historical movement of these poles indicate a change in the global geometry of the Earth's magnetic field. It may even indicate the beginning of a field reversal, a flip between the north and the south magnetic poles. Uh, this person goes on to say, I'm a physicist who studied the interaction between the planets in space while the north magnetic pole moving a little bit isn't a big deal, a reversal could have big impact on the Earth's climate and modern technology. Magnetic fields are generated by moving electric charges. Uh, and it goes on to say layers of conducting material can be found in the Earth's liquid core. Currents of these charges throughout the core and the liquid is also from moving and circulating the core. Now, I brought that article up because I saw a meme, uh, it was a picture mm of the sun from this week. I don't know if you saw that image. A few. Gigantic piece of just blackness. <laughs> yes. Did you see that? Yes. It was massive piece of just blackness. There was no red or orange on it. It was all black. And the question was, what is happening to our sun? And I was immediately talking about thinking about all the things that Stan has told us. Yes. That that is happening with the magnetic field. There's a lot of people believes that it's already beginning to shift. What yep. do you think? What are you hearing? Uh, yeah, I've definitely heard that. And th this is big. <laughs> so many things hinge on this. Uh, and you can imagine the problems that it would cause. It, we're such a technologically dependent society. Yeah. Um, from GPS to just com any form of communications. Imagine how that could really shake things up and destroy a lot of things yeah and and like you said communication satellite uh, uh communication and now already a big part of the world is relying on uh elon musk starlink internet mm. so if you if that whole system got messed up i mean you you're talking about your and then the gps of course predominantly was invented for military so when the mil if the military don't have gps now they're in trouble i mean they okay it may have been you know created for them but think about how many people yeah. down to the individual level depend upon it yeah. commercial airline everything everything uh shipping i mean this endless it is it is endless so so yeah be looking out for the sun <laughs> here comes the sun yeah like we can do anything about it <laughs> yeah yeah don't look at it you oh. know look at pictures of it okay mm, 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 mm. and then then we got, we got all about the fact we got an eclipse coming what? Oh, the 2024? The, yeah. What mm. date was the date? April. April. I think it's April. April something. A full eclipse. Yeah. If everything goes right and the Lord hadn't come back soon, we're going to try to go watch it. Big stuff. And we, if we are there, we're going to do it live, man. We're going to do it live or something. <laughs> we're going to do some kind of show there. Uh, but we still got to talk about the war in Ukraine. It's still going on, saying it's um, yes. It, but but it's I think it's winding strangely down. enough. You hardly ever hear anything about it. Exactly. <laughs> uh, still. And I think it's I think it's winding down. Uh, NATO chief warns of bad news for Ukraine after failed counteroffensive. Of course, that was going to be their spring surprise and became the summer, and that now it's saying it's failed. Na NATO general uh, Jens Stoltenberg. Uh, has warned that Western powers should be prepared for bad news from Ukraine in the wake of Kiev's failed counteroffensive against occupying Russian forces. Amid growing concerns about Ukraine's ability to continue the fight against the much larger Russian military and failures to recapture any meaningful amount of territory for Moscow's army, there are growing whispers in the halls of power in the West about the ex-Soviet state's prospects in battling back its former master. Mm. The latest to publicly expressed concern <laughs> was NATO chief 
uh, Jens Stalenberg, who told German broadcaster Ard, as translated by Politico, that the West should be prepared for bad news without elaborating on exactly what he believes may befall the war-torn country next. The comments from the Norwegian politician came as the Kremlin announced that President Vladimir Putin had ordered the addition of 170,000 extra troops to the Russian armed forces mm. in a move that would take the total strength of the army to over 1.3 million. And it goes on with a related tweet here on X. Zelensky tells Britain, world is no longer focused on Ukraine anymore, <laughs> and he is sad. He is sad. Wow. He's mm. sad. Why is he sad? He's sad because he ain't getting no more money. Exactly. Because it's the ridiculous. truth is, the man has got billions of dollars. And his wife, if you've seen where he has wife traveling all over the world, she's going to France, buying furs and all this kind of stuff. Look, I know there's a war going on. Okay, I know there's something yes. going on over there. Yes. But the truth is, Sandy, we've been, we have been, we have been lied to, duped, uh, yeah. lied to. It's ridiculous. Um, Vladimir, uh, Mr. Putin, he has determined that he is bringing. All the states back together. Yeah. He's getting everybody back together. And I don't think he is probably even to this date released uh, the attack that he could. Yeah, no. On. No, no. So while, you know, they're worried about going into the hedges and highways and, and basically abducting as many men as they can to come and fight this war, uh, Vladimir, you know, Putin sits there and he hasn't even begun to do what he could do. And so what's going to happen? Yeah. How much more money can we send over there for this failed attempt? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he's upset that the world's thinking about Israel. He's upset <laughs> that the world's thinking about all this other stuff. This because is such a joke. It's, 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 oh. <clears throat> it's the money cow. It's the money cow. And, and, and just this week, by the way, I've got that up there because, Half the people just watching right now is is the is the number of viewers versus smash the like button people. Mm. So y'all need to get on it right now. Mm. If you're watching this right now, hit that like Come button. On. Hit that like button. <laughs> so, um, but <sighs> but just this week, um, President Biden uh, sent a memo to Congress and said we need an emergency. Uh, I think it's like nine hundred million or something. I don't know what it is. A huge huge amount. And, uh, and said, because the money is almost ran out. So we need to hurry up and get as much over there as we can because we can't find any more money. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, that's literally what it said, Sandy. It said we have run out of money, <sighs> so we need to go ahead and get some money now while we got a little bit before it runs out. What can even be said? Why? The pr you would think the printing presses have... We're smoking like three months ago. What about the, us? <laughs> what about America? All the overprinting. Um, yeah, what about us? Exactly. Yeah, what <clears> about <throat> us? What about us? What what about what about our veterans? What about our veterans? Yeah. We're we're taking care of their veterans. Yes. What about our people yes. that's trying to have a retirement? What about the people in our country that's got a 401k that's collapsing? Come on. What about our families that can't afford to buy groceries. They can't afford to pay their mortgage. They can't afford to pay their rent. Exactly. The homeless population is escalating. Escalating. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. What What about us? Yeah. But yet there's an emergency. We need to get as much money to Ukraine now as possible. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it, Congress. Tell him no. Stop it. Because the truth is, I, I don't know when we're going to war with China, but we're going to go to war with China Where's the money going to be then? Where Where is the artillery that we have sent to Ukraine that we don't even have bullets and, and missiles? We have our arsenal has we have openly yep. said has been de depleted, depleted. And it would take years to replace some of these components. Exactly. Years. Years. But yet we're not the big war that our generals are saying to their own people. We have people on the ground that's telling us that our military is being told that we're going to war with China. I mean, we need we need things to protect our soldiers. We do. We need to be bolstering our country. We need to be helping our veterans. 
so many things that we need to be doing here. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and I'm, listen, we're no fans of, of Putin, but Putin's taking care of his soldiers. Putin's taking care of his country. Yes. And, and, and he's, and quite frankly, I'm not, I'm not promoting him. He's an evil man. But, but what I'm saying is they, while we have become woke, we've turned our military into something that, that the yep. doesn't even resemble Tell the military. It. He has been, he, along with China, and they've been building this BRICS community, whatever you want to call it, organization, and this world organization, and, and they're wanting to back their money with gold. They're, they're, it's they're like we're going to show you how our NATO version works, and so you know what is going to come of it. We hadn't talked about this in a while, but rumors still persist that BRICS is going to back their currency with gold, and with the de-dollarization, an, an undeniable reality that continues to accelerate faster and faster on a week-to-week -week basis. It seems that there may not there may be a lot of questions as to what the new currency or currencies would be as the replacement. While things still remain uncertain for now, one narrative has remained one of the mo more consistent, and that is now a collective currency created by BRICS to facilitate international mm -mm 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 -mm. trade. And they have, and it go, the article goes on to say that one by one of the G7 nations in the world are moving away from the petrodollar, they're moving away from the U.S. dollar, and they're embracing the BRICS uh, digital currency that they're going to have. That's going to be a digital currency, but it's going to be backed by gold. Well, they're looking at our country and they're saying nothing is backing your dollar. Mm. Nothing. It's worthless. But they're going to have yep. gold backed. Little by little. We just received a... Um Moody's and uh, what was the other downgrade, was downgrade last week? Yeah, sure was. Was it last week? It was last week. Credit downgrade. So it's like little by little, the foundation is being whittled away underneath our feet. Yep. We're being weakened on so many fronts in this country. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And we're distracted to the point that we can't collectively understand what's going on. People don't, they don't know because they're too busy. They're too beaten down. What do we do? Exactly. What do you do? Exactly. <clears throat> the article goes on to say, uh, Deputy Chairman of Russia's State Duma, Alexander Babakov, stated in March, the transition to settlements in national currencies is the first step. The next one is to provide the circulation of digital or any f other form of a fundamentally new currency in the nearest future. I think that at the BRICS Leaders Summit, the readiness to realize the project will be announced. Such works are underway. Mm. So literally he is saying by, the, by our next conference that we have, our BRICS conference, we will be able to publicly announce we have the framework for our own digital BRICS currency. And by that time, how many will have been um, received into BRICS and how many more standing, waiting for their acceptance into BRICS? Yep. Yep, <sighs> exactly. Well, you know, one of the things we want to talk about tonight is, um, you know, we we go back to what called us out of Papa and Nana retirement <laughs> was the wang wang. And when yes. all the stuff happened with the wham wham, we, we looked at that and we thought, okay, we can be silent or we can be a voice. And uh, right. because we got sick and tired of not just seeing people dying and being sick, but the control yes. that was taken. Oppressive the, control. The, the oppressive yep. control, the freedoms that were taken from us. And uh, so the World Economic Forum, um, Noah Harari has said himself, and all of them have said that you you have to have another crisis. Every <laughs> you, you grab power when the crisis comes. Yes. So we've known that another version of the wow wow was coming, whether it be the version of COVID or would be something else. Well, lo and behold, it's on everybody's news. Everybody's talking about yes what's happening in China again. So here we are again. Or, or I mean, that's when we called this show. Here we go again. Is this, you know, Yogi Berra said, I feel like it's deja vu all over again, you know. But the viral spread is happening. All right, notice the images here in China. 
viral spread, the European cities mm-hmm. are most likely to be hit hardest. That sort of sounds familiar. I remember mm-hmm. that the wang wang <clears throat> exploded in Europe as it's getting ready to explode over here by China's new mystery pneumonia outbreak. I want to I want to come back to that and we'll break some things down. Pneumonia. It's very important that you re- remember that word. China's mystery pneumonia-like eruption has sparked major fears over the virus spreading into Europe and badly infecting four major cities. The outbreak that's shown worrying similarities to how the Wang Wang started has been at the heart of controversy since hospitals were first overwhelmed with, here's the other catchphrase, yep. sick children. Yep. These are the words you need to remember. Pneumonia mm-hmm. and children. Yep. Okay? There you go. And it goes on to show some images here. Um, and you'll see how the nightmare spread. Yep. There are the four European cities, Paris, London, Amsterdam, and Frankfurt. Yep. China's mystery pneumonia outbreak could be coming to these major European cities <clears throat> soon. Now uh, that it started in China. Of started course. in China, of course, yes. Um, the, re- the, the reasoning centers around these places being large, densely populated areas and transit hubs for the rest of the world. The likelihood of the outbreak reaching Europe is closely tied to global travel dynamics. Airports in cities like London, Paris, Frankfurt, and Amsterdam, known for their extensive global connections, may be the first European points of entry for the illness. These cities are just transit hubs. They also host large, densely populated areas, which can facilitate the spread of respiratory infections. Uh, it's already said Amsterdam uh, is seeing a spike in, in this pneumonia type thing. All right, so what I want to go back to is this. If you will remember, I'm going to leave this right here for just a second, where it says China's mystery pneumonia, and then you see overwhelmed with sick children. If you will remember when the wang wang was at its highest Mm -hmm. infection, the fear was that it started out as COVID, but you wanted to make sure it did not become pneumonia. Because when it became pneumonia, that's when they would do the, what do they call that? Where they, the breathing machine. Um, When you intubate? Yeah, but I forgot what it's called, the respiratory, whatever, whatever, when they they would go on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when they would, when they would go in intensive care and they would have to go on that to where they could not breathe on their own. Can't think of. I'm having a brain freeze. Alicia's right on here. She can help yeah. us out. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I mean, come on. We both know it. We're just right. Forgetting. Yeah, but uh, so many people they did not want that because they knew friends and family members that yeah passed away yeah by that process. And almost every it, the 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 end ratio that ended in death yes once you went there was much much ventilator uh, respiratory resp- ventilator ventilator. Mm-hmm. So you go on the ventilator. Um, it was not a good finish number is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to parse my words here because we got flagged last yes. time we talked about this. But so so let's – with this one, they're just skipping right to it. I want you to think about what I'm saying. I want you to think yeah. it's, not, it's not a virus mm-hmm. that could become pneumonia. Mm-hmm. It is – this is a spreading of pneumonia. Mm-hmm. This is a highly contagious pneumonia. Alicia's saying they knew that they wouldn't come off the ventilator. Yeah, they knew. And then remdesivir is yeah. um, the drug yeah. that I was trying to remember. We've got to be of. careful what yeah. we say. Yeah. We've got to be careful what we say because some of these are catch words that will get us. Okay, and that's horrible. I hate it. Um, I hate that i got to play this game. Yes. But some of these words will get us the blue square down at the bottom of, the, yeah. of this show and then get us flagged might even get us kicked off. So we, we can say these things. And they can say them, but a lot of times we can't say them. So, so we can we can read them. Some things. Me and you need to have a list, a little checklist over here. So when we're, we're doing our show, <laughs> we like say list. this, don't say this, say this, don't say you this. You cannot say these words. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <sighs> it's crazy though. Is that not crazy that in the United States of America, we cannot sit here and talk? There are certain things that we cannot talk about. That is ridiculous. Okay. Well, I don't know if you we talked about this last week, um, but you know, 
one of the channels that I've watched for years on YouTube, and I've got you to watching the last year or so, has been deplatformed. Yeah, with no warning. No warning. No warning. No strikes. Yep. Gone. Gone. Just gone one day. Yeah. So apparently, he hit some buzzwords. He said some things that he shouldn't have said, and he was just gotten rid of. Yep. 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 So yeah, we do have to be careful. And we we know where this is headed. I mean, we're we're yes. smart enough to know that. You know, we're not going to have unlimited time on this platform. So so we're going to do the best we can to stay as long as we can. And if you're listening to us, yeah. YouTube gurus out there, we love being on YouTube. Okay? We want, to, we want to be good. But sometimes I'm not good. Sometimes I just have to say things. and I, and, bad, I, bad and I get boy. in trouble sometimes. You're such a bad boy. <laughs> but, uh, moving but, on. But, 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 yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, but, look. Here's the key words. Here's the catch words. As this thing begins to spread more, and it will, it will, because dare I say that's the plan, it will. And and it's following a pattern, you know, the, the old definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's like we're doing the same thing again, but people are just sort of lining up with the narrative. Mm -hmm. And they've skipped the don't let it turn into, and they've said, it's pneumonia. Mm. And then and then the big one, Sandy, the big one is yeah. right alongside that word is predominantly affects mm -hmm. children. Bam. There you go. Yeah. So we're seeing the groundswell, but it is taking a, a different turn this time. It's not we're not repeating the exact same story. It's got different elements here and. You think you know where this is going, but then I, I'm standing back and I'm trying to observe. I don't know that that we do know exactly where this is going. No, we don't. Um, I got a little bit of anxiety because I just would like to know what they're going to do next. And it's hard to know mm. what they're going to do next. Yeah, and, and what they're going to do, <laughs> we do know this, is not a good plan. It's not a good plan. Because what we've tried to remind you is that in just at the time of this live stream or recording, when you're watching it, we are mere weeks away from being six years away from Agenda 2030. Yes. I mean, they have a lot of work to do to get to those 17 sustainable goals. And we're going to talk a lot about them tonight. They do, but so much has happened just in this one year. It really has. It's scary. And, and in addition to, and by the way, if it's called white lung syndrome yeah. white lung syndrome and i did a show on this you can go you can go mm -hmm. find it and I'll, I'll link it down below at when the show's over with you can go right there i did an in-depth show on white lung pneumonia this week and uh it was pointed out by several rns uh several respiratory therapists that we have on that follow us here they said it's just another word for pneumonia it's another word for walking pneumonia it's a version of walking pneumonia but why would why why don't they just call it there's an uptick in walking pneumonia? Because that doesn't sound like <laughs> scary there, enough. <laughs> there's yeah, exactly. There's a new outbreak, and yeah. this outbreak from China is called white lung uh syndrome. And the reason they call it white lung is based on the x-ray that 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 mm -hmm. when it fills the lungs, it, it becomes white on the x-ray, all the fluid that's in there. Well, guess what? I'm not belittling it, but that's been the same way every X-ray of every pneumonia patient's ever been. But the whole media is lining up and calling it yeah. white lung, white lung. And by the way, I've noticed this this week. They, they're starting to drop syndrome. They're just starting to call it white lung. Oh, really? Yeah, they're starting to call it white lung. So mm -hmm. you're going to start hearing white lung. So where you, have, you heard the words COVID, which I'm sure I've already got flagged, so I'm going to say that, uh, now you're going to hear white lung, and that's probably going to get you flagged as well. If you're not already, if it's not already in the algorithm, that's going to be a no-no down the line. Uh, but it's just another word for pneumonia. But when you factor that in with children, Ugh. that's where the fear, that's where the fear uh, control mm. comes in. And they're not through because just this week as well, the CDC director Cohen come out this week and says the triple demic. Yep. COVID, flu, and RSV and is back. And they started back. floating that word several months back, triple-demic. Yep, it's back. I mean, we first heard it last winter, but now it's back. Yeah. 
The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC Director Mandy Cohen claims that the so-called triple-demic is back in full swing in the United States, and therefore she is urging caution and, of course, urging you to get the wah wah. <laughs> Almost exactly a year to the to date, the CDC and the mainstream media had warned what they called the triple demic that it was not just COVID 19 Americans had to be worried about, but then also the flu, which had apparently taken a solid two year hiatus. Remember that? <laughs> yes. I mean, it just went away. Nobody had the flu. Nobody it was amazing. Flu. Or a cold. Uh, and everything had to be COVID. Flu was MIA. Sp- <laughs> yep, yep. But the CDC at time recommending mask wearing once again that winter on top of available wah-wahs. A few weeks prior to that time, NBC was telling viewers to not hug or be around family members, which mm-hmm. is around Christmas time and Thanksgiving, who were unwah-wahed. Mm-hmm. You ever heard that word before? Unwah-wahed. <laughs> Or frankly, just people in general, unless they knew that they were deemed safe to be around. I mean, I mean, I wanted to be the lucky one that was deemed safe to be around, but I was not because I was the unwound. That's all I'm going to say. Un-wah-wah. Now the CDC is again warning about the confluence of cases and disease. So mm. let's let's th- let's think about how they're stepping up their control yeah. game. Yes. The triple demic is back. Triple demic. In the middle of multiple wars. Okay? In yep. the middle of white lung. <laughs> I mean, my God, what is going on in this world? Are we living literally in a movie? <sighs> so much stuff. Yes. So exactly. much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? You just you just don't even know what to say, do you? you just, no, it's you just don't. like you know. No, you don't. <laughs> well, let me tell you what ha- also <clears throat> happened behind the scenes this week. This week, New York City <sighs> passed a executive order which became law under the radar, and I just want to let this dude right here. He, he, by the way, he's he's from the Epic Times. He's one of the reporters from the Epic Times that I'm a contributor for, that mm-hmm. I'm very happy to be a part of, uh, that you can read my article there. But I want you to listen to this. This is not conspiracy. This is 100% fact. Listen to this. Because of a new court ruling, which just came down last week, the state of New York, and particularly the governor of New York, has just gotten one step closer to attaining the ultimate pandemic power, being able to designate certain classes of individuals as a health threat. I got to stop it and say, thank you for that super chat. Yes. Diane, Thanks, what Diane. a blessing. Awesome. What a blessing. Thank you. Forcibly relocating those individuals to specially designated housing facilities and keeping them there for as long as the government wants. And also, they'd have the power to control what these people can and cannot do. However, if these new government powers sound like the very definition of a quarantine camp, well, according to this AP fact check right here, you would be wrong although their reasoning is perhaps even more ridiculous than you can probably imagine. And so let's go through it all together. To start with, back in December of 2021, at the height of the COVID pandemic, you had a bill that was working its way through the New York State Legislature. This bill would allow the government to take people that they deem to be threats to the general public health and put those people into essentially indefinite detention. This bill, just for your reference, was called Assembly Bill 416, And when I personally read this bill back in December, it was frankly the most aggressive piece of legislation I've come across in the past decade. Right. Let's go Mm. through the bill together and you can tell me what you think of it. You can leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Here's how the bill reads, quote, upon determining by clear and convincing evidence that the health of others is or may be endangered by a case, contact or carrier or suspected case, contact or carrier of a contagious disease, that in the opinion of the governor, after consultation with the health commissioner, may pose an imminent and significant threat to the public health, resulting in severe morbidity or high mortality. Now, just to pause here for a super quick moment, what this bill is laying out here is that based on the opinion of the governor, if you as an individual, or if you as a member of a class of individuals, if the governor determines that you are contagious for some disease, or if someone you have contact with is contagious for some disease, at least based on the suspicion of the governor, You're all now subject to what comes next. Quote, 
The governor or his or her delegate, including but not limited to the commissioner or the heads of local health departments, may order the removal and or detention of such a person or group of such persons wow. by issuing a single order identifying such persons either by name or by a reasonably specific description of the individuals or group being detained. Now, to pause here again for another. That's insane. Yes. This is the United States of America. Yes. This is not just, I said New York City, but it's the state of New York. The state of New York. And she's the governor. And she's the governor. The state of New York tried to pass this. It was pushed back. People sued for it to be stayed and so forth. And just this week, the appellate or the Supreme Court or whatever level it's at, flipped it and returned it back and made it law, made it law. Listen. Scary. That's in our country. Yes. And I promise you it's that way in other countries as well. Mm. At the opinion of the governor, if the opinion of whoever is the governor, Republican or Democrat, when one of these things happens and they deem you to be unsafe to the public, they can name you, the, the law said, name you publicly, shame you, then detain you, and put you in a camp of isolation. This does not even seem real, right? It doesn't. That's crazy. I want to fast forward to this part right here, Sandy, because this mm. is this is the, the, the last part of this video that you need to see, y'all, because this really drives it home. And all he's doing is reading the law. Quarantined individuals, once they're removed from their homes, can be placed into, quote, temporary housing locations that the public health authority issuing the order determines appropriate. And then afterwards, there are several more subsections outlining the specifics of how these quarantined individuals can be treated once they are placed into these temporary housing locations, including things like this, quote, if the location of isolation or quarantine is a detached structure, then the person may go outside while remaining on the premise, but shall not leave the premise or come within six feet of any person who does not reside at the premise or such other distance as may be appropriate for the specific disease. And so just to summarize, after Assembly Bill 416 was dead on arrival, there was no way it was going through the state legislature, these new regulations were placed onto the books by the executive branch, giving the unelected bureaucrats over in the Department of Health the power to pick and choose who they want to detain if they believe if they believe there's even a possibility that this particular individual or group of individuals has a communicable disease. They also, by the way, don't have to prove that they're actually sick. Furthermore, once this person is determined to be a threat, they can be detained either in their home or they can be taken from their home and placed into a facility. And the length of the stay in the facility, well, that's purely at the government's discretion. If all this sounds familiar to you, well, that might be because you've been following the developments over in communist China over mm. the last several years. Regardless, once this regulation was put into place, a lawsuit was filed against it, arguing that it was, for one, a violation of people's constitutional rights, as well as, Take. secondly, a power grab on the part of the executive branch, since essentially they created a new law out of thin air, something that only the legislative branch could do. For your reference, in that lawsuit, you had multiple different plaintiffs, including State Senator George Borrello, as well as New York. I'm going to stop it there. Oh goodness, you you see where it's going. I mean, it's it's basically we're becoming China. Yeah. We're becoming China. This this is this is something straight out of a movie. We keep coming back to that of a epidemic, a quarantine happening and they are building almost like FEMA camps yeah. or something like that. And, and you know, we we have to be careful on that too because that'll get you flagged too. But you know, probably we probably shouldn't have said that. Probably shouldn't have said that. Probably shouldn't have said that. Can I take it back, YouTube? Can I take it back? But <sighs> but this is now effectively law. It was basically approved and upheld by the judicial system. Now they're saying we would we we just wanted this in case we need it. We probably won't ever use it. But just in case we ever needed it, we needed to make sure we had that kind of power to protect. Yeah. It sounds like a, a, a tax debate. When did we ever get rid of taxes? Yeah, right. When do we ever get rid of bad laws? Yeah. They just hang around. They just hang around. <sighs> mm. Okay. All right. You ready to move on? Definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm sorry I don't have good news, but... <laughs> The United States water systems are now being targeted by Iran-linked cyber attacks in multiple states. 
U.S. federal agencies have warned that an Iran-linked hacking group is targeting Israeli-made devices used in multiple U.S. industries, including water systems. Look, at the, they even put the screen up there. You have been hacked. Wow. Every equipment made in Israel is Cyber Avengers' legal target. And uh, it goes on to say that multiple federal agencies are warning uh, that tar- we have been targeted U.S. water systems and other industries that use programmable logic control made by Israeli firm Untronics. As the Israeli Hamas war simmers in the background, hackers affiliated with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps have engaged in malicious cyber activity targeting PLC operational technology devices used in the U.S. water and wastewater systems Mm. and in other industries, including energy, food, and beverage manufacturing since at least November 22. The agencies that issued the warning include the FBI, the Cyber and Infrastructure Security Agency, and the National Security Agency, and the Israel Israel National's uh, Cyber Directive joining the advisory. So, so now we see that the war, and I want you to think about what this means, the war in Israel is now on our soul. Ooh, look out. Is that, am I right? Yep. Well, you are the great Satan here in America. That is true. So, wow. You know, Iran, wow, I don't think we realize how technologically advanced they are. We've talked about their probably have a great, great number of soldiers that we've yet to understand in their army, military might that we've probably yet to understand. They have vast amounts of money, and they're funding how many of these terrorist groups? Yeah, yeah. And it just goes on and on and on. And now, not just now, this hasn't just happened, that we have to worry about these hackers. But apparently, it's even that's gaining ground and gaining steam. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we you just, you said it, you know, we underestimate how technologically advanced they are. We underestimate them, I believe, in every yeah. way. We really do. Because the, the, <clears throat> the common thought of, is, uh, of Iran to a, 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 a person in America, mm-hmm. Europe, or something like that, they have purposely tried to make us think that it is, you know, just poor. Um, uneducated, uneducated. Backwards. 200 years behind. You know, they're they they're don't, they'll, militarily weak. I think all this is a lie. It's all a lie. It is the number one manufacturer of military drones in the world. Yes. They supply all of Russia's drones. Yes. Iran. Yep. It is a nuclear <laughs> state. <laughs> they have nuclear power and nuclear warheads. Yes. Uh, mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And, and, and we continue to just think that because of the way you see the, the, the uh, Ayatollah, you know, dressed or, or you think about, we just don't think that. Think about this. We, we covered when right after the war began with Gaza and, and Israel that they, were, they hacked Israel's alert system. The Israeli, Iranian-backed systems, they went in and created a false Alarm, it's just almost like to show them yep. we can we can get in there and do what we want to do. <laughs> we can turn off your, uh, you know, you don't know what to believe, but there's there's people that are saying that they had the ability to turn off the cameras, or, inv- or hack the cameras that were on the walls protecting the Jewish people. Yep. Mm mm. All right. I keep waiting for you to say something. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Okay. It's just this is so far out there. It is. Their capabilities have still not been revealed. And we, like I said, continue to underestimate them. Yeah. But they have all this money, the power, and the will. Yeah. And that's while right. we stand back. And we keep giving them money. We keep releasing money. They keep saying, well, we're not giving them money. We're just releasing money. Don't release it. Yeah, don't release it. Stop releasing it. Mm. Well, 
the CDC is, is still worried about our health because this week, while they were talking about vaccines for the triple demic, they decided to just go ahead and erase women <laughs> from their new vaccine guidance. <sighs> they now officially on the Centers for Disease Control use the word gender, the gender neutral word, pregnant people. What, what is wrong with us? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, has erased the term woman, women, from its recent health guidance and has replaced it with gender exclusive, exclusionary terminology. This includes omitting gender specific terms such as she, her, women, and mother, and replacing them with terms like pregnant person and pregnant people. The changes can be seen in recommendation, recommended, recommend, recommended health guidance for respiratory virus vaccinations for pregnant women. And this is a screenshot in it. It says, in particular, vaccine promotional materials for flu, COVID-19, RSV, which are diseases that can be deadly to pregnant women, were updated to reflect the new terminology. And this is a screenshot from it. A flu vaccine is the best way to protect pregnant people and their babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If what we in say the world? It, if we say it, it must be real. If yeah. we just change the terminology, if we just change some words around, this is ridiculous. Why is that <laughs> your concern? Right. Why is this so important? It's like it's like Mayorkas. You remember last week he just he, instead of closing the border, his directive was to the border agents, make sure that you do not use common pronouns when talking to illegal immigrants. Yeah. It is the, it literally gave a mandate to make right. sure they ask what is before we go any further in this conversation. What is your preferred pronoun? Yeah. God. Well, I have a beard. I got an Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to be called Julie, and I'm a she. Yeah. Clearly, this is the most important thing. I don't know. Why is that? Why is that policy? Even if that's how you feel, how is that okay with Americans that our government is spending millions and millions of dollars to pay these people to design and print all this stuff? Mm, mm -mm. You just can't not even believe the stupidity in this country. What do you think would happen if they'd say, well, I prefer that you call me child of God? Mm, they would reject that. Yeah, my, my pronoun is saved by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Can you refer me to saved by the blood of Jesus, Larry? Yeah, they're going to take you to jail immediately. <clears throat> um, yeah, they're going to try. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, you know, all you can do, Sandy, is sometimes when things like this happen, just get in your car. Drive away. Drive away. Just what? drive away. But well, wait, a wait a minute. <laughs> Federal Transportation Agency is now calling for speed monitoring software. Not only do they want a kill switch to be able to turn your car off, want everybody to drive a battery powered car, a golf cart, basically, on the interstate, they want speed monitoring software placed into the cars. A federal agency is calling for a nationwide mandate requiring new vehicles to have software surveilling American drivers to adhere to local speed limits. Hmm. What? On November 14th, the National Transportation Safety Board published a new release advocating intelligent speed assistant technology and countermeasures including interlock programs for repeat speeding offenders in all new cars. Mm -mm. So let's think about it. All right. Here we go. New cars is state where well, I think we have 16 states already that have already banned gas powered cars. Yes. 16 or 17. We talked about just last week. And wasn't that 2026? I think it was 2026. By 2026. Mm, I thought it was a little later than that. But either way, yeah. this is uh, gaining ground. More yeah. and more states are coming on board. This crazy idea. So 16 states. Says you got to have all new cars are going to be battery powered. In the state of California, they're going to ban the sale of used gas powered cars. 
when that law goes into effect. Okay, so you got that. Why? Because we tell you all the time, if it's battery powered, it's programmable, yes. meaning they can turn it off if they want to turn mm -hmm. it off. Mm -hmm. And they want that kill yep. switch. That just went through the, to the Congress. A kill yep. switch law that will protect against drunk driving. Look how awesome these things are, is that it will be able to detect yep. that you're, you know, Enumerated. Is that, did I say that right? <laughs> Inebriated. Inebriated. <laughs> Enumerated. Enumerated. I got, look, I got my own vocabulary. Okay. You but, really do. But I really do. It's precious. But, but, you know, thank you. But, you know, hey, he looks a little tipsy. Let's turn his <laughs> car off. But now that's not enough. They want to say, uh huh. You've been going 68 and a 65. Mm. You've been setting that cruise right on 75 in a, in a, in a, in a 70. And and you you just a little bit above it on your long trips to the beach and all that. Uh 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 uh. I saw what you posted on X. I saw that video mm. you made. You said you didn't agree with our new law. Oh, okay. So you're you're getting at. Oh, oh you're a conservative. Yep. You're a Christian. Exactly. You don't agree with our policies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're just gonna. Mm. Oh yeah. You can drive to church. But you're going to have to drive 25 miles an hour on the speed limit, and, and the speed limit's 55. We're going to put you on the side of the road. You're going to be late for church. Then eventually you're going to be like, you ain't going to church today unless you walk. You ain't going to church. You got a horse? You ain't got a horse? <laughs> Turn you off. A horse? What? <laughs> got to have a horse. Got to go back to the horse and muggy days. Okay. <clears throat> I'm telling you, we got to figure out a way to get around. They want to put us in a 15-minute yes, city. Yes, that's it, 15-minute city. I'm not riding a bicycle to church. <laughs> I'm sorry. Never say never. Uh, yeah, it's all about control, 15-minute cities. It is. It, that's, what, that's, what, that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't smashed that like button, do it now, do it now, do it now. And if you don't already follow us on Rumble, please go tonight when the show is over with. If you're watching us on YouTube, go to rumble.com slash Larry Raglan and follow us there uh, because that may be end up where, where we end up, you know, mm. you know, when it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, but um, let's 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 hit a few more things. Are you still with me? You still with me? Barely. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? <laughs> Give me a thumbs up. Y'all still with me? Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there. Send help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, don't forget every Wednesday night I do an in-depth Bible study, man. I'm going to be getting into all deep teaching on Christmas like you've never heard before. I nice. promise you, you're going to hear some things about Christmas you awesome. never, ever, ever heard about the nativity that. scene. All right, but uh, this right here just infuriates me. This this, this right here, I mean, of all the things, this one makes my blood boil. This came out today. Uh, the Biden administration is threatening school lunch money. Oh, yeah. If they if they do not, uh, if you're not woke enough, if you're not woke enough, a senator if you from, don't fall in line. Yeah, and look what they want to fall in line with. You can see where it's going. He's so proud to be standing in front of pride. A senator from Kansas is vowing a fight against the Biden administration's forced decision that it will punish low income students who need help. This is the free lunch program. Okay, remember we all, they always say Republicans are trying to take free lunch away. Listen to what what Biden is doing. Decision to punish low income students who need help from a federal lunch money program if their schools are not sufficiently woke. Don't be fooled here. The Biden administration is the only player in this policy fight that is taking away lunches from children. U.S. Senator Roger Marshall from Kansas said in an interview, there is real world evidence that the USDA's policy has already taken away school lunch funding from low-income children, weaponizing school lunch money in pursuit of their radical ag agenda and putting students in the crosshairs is unconscionable, and we will not stand for it. The issue is one that Biden has used multiple times in his demands, that every, every federal agency promote his LGBT ideology, specifically transgenderism. He has decided to simply rewrite regulations, creating a new definition for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which handles federal help for school lunches. The USDA has ordered that its ban on sex discrimination now include, quote, discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity, which never had been a part of his agenda before Biden. Mm. School funding goes <clears throat> to the F Food and Nutrition Service of the USDA. 
Okay, this is very upsetting to me because they know how important providing this food, providing yep. breakfast and lunch yep. for these children is. Yes, yes. And so now as a um, part of your control, as a measure of your control, you're going to break it all the way down to the nutrition of children and jeopardizing that to try to get everybody to fall in line? Exactly. And, and the, the, the main thing it's about is bathrooms. What's the deal with bathrooms, man? It's all about the trends. Yeah, that's what it is. For instance, schools receiving. Agenda. If a school receives Pell Grants, FAFSA, our students who receive federally subsidized school lunch programs will be subject to the new Title IX interpretation or risk losing that funding. It says... Um, this is a significant interpretation to say that sex equals sexual orientation and gender identity when Title IX, we know, dates back to 1972 and the women's liberation movement. And at that time, there was an entire campaign by the LGBTQ activists to be included in the anti-discrimination law that they themselves did not believe that they were protected in these particular contexts. So, so basically... They want to amend Title IX, which helped girls' sports and different things like that, to now include sexual orientation and, and, and identity. So basically, and by, by the way, when you're talking about Pell Grants and FAFSA, you're talking about colleges. Yes. So you're talking about K-12 through and all the way through colleges. So any, pub, any entity that's a school from kindergarten, preschool, kindergarten, all the way to graduating college, if you have any government funding coming, they are threatening to shut all that off if you do not allow men, biological males, to use the women's restroom and vice versa. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Wow. What year did that start? 2017, 2018? The whole thing about the bathroom? The bathroom. It was during Obama. It was during Obama administration. Obama <clears throat> sent the letter out to all the schools threatening. So that's just the bottom line. This this all began during the Obama administration. And, of course, you know. I don't think it matters whose administration matter. it, it matter. began. Yeah. And no. that's not what I'm getting at. I'm yeah. getting at how long has this been going on to, br to bring us to this point. Um, yeah. It's just very frustrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. All um, right. Well, let's move on. Uh, seeing that we got a lively live chat going over there, we just have to look do. over there. I can't wait to go back and read it. Uh, I love our live chat, but you know, we can always just sort of say, you know what, Sandy, we got to get away from all this. We need to go find us a good steak and just throw it on the grill, or go find us a steakhouse and just mm. get away from it all. If only. If only. Mm. We could count on being able to eat a steak. This is coming down to this week because they were meeting with the whole climate thing. Eat less meat is the message from Rich World in First Foods First Net Zero plan. There it is. There's the scale. And this is amazing to me. They're saying foods, carbon, and footprint. Global greenhouse gas emissions uh, from food production. 18% supply chain, 31% livestock and fisheries, 24% land use, and 27% crop production. So Bloomberg is reporting that the world's most developed nations will be told to curb their excessive ap appetite for meat as part of the first comprehensive plan to bring the global agri-food industry into line with the Paris Climate Agreement. The Global Food Systems Roadmap is expected to be published by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization during the COP28 mm -hmm. summit next mm -hmm. month. Nations that over-consume meat will be advised to limit their intake while developing countries where under-consumption under of meat adds to preventive nutrition challenge will need to improve their livestock farm, farming. From farm to fork, food systems account for about a third of global greenhouse gas emissions. And much of that footprint is linked to livestock farming, a major source of methane. That's a fancy way of saying a lot of cow poots. Yeah. That's what that is. 
I know. It's cow poop. And it's ridiculous. I mean, okay, so the COP28, you said is happening when? Well, that that was an old, it's, it's going on right now, I think. Okay. I think. Well, let's look at it. Let's. Do you, you want me to move on to this one? Yes. Okay. We need to All get right. into that. Okay. So vegan eco-terrorists outrage as meat lobbyist ranchers descend on COP28, COP28, uh, climate change conference to counter attack on meat assumption this, consumption. It, this is absolutely ridiculous. It is. I mean, read the title of that again, this article. Yeah, yeah. Vegan eco-terrorists outraged as meat. They're outraged. They're outraged. They're outraged because meat lobbyists, pro-meat people, and ranchers descend on COP28 climate change conference to counter attack on the meat consumption narrative. So in I other mean, words, you're not welcome here to discuss solutions if you believe in eating meat. Mm. You want me to read this? This entire <laughs> I'm sorry. This entire show tonight is just mostly ridiculous. It is. You know? But it's really it's ridiculous, but it's fact. Yes. This is really happening. These things are happening, and it is crazy. All this crazy talk to me. We can't uh, <laughs> call women women anymore. We can't. They. We're not supposed to consume meat. We're dangerous if we believe. We can. we can't. We can't drive our speed limit in our car. You can't we, drive we, your cat's power car. I mean, it's like. It is in overdrive Everything because is. because they know Sandy they got to get to that twenty thirty thing. That's yes. their that's their plan. They 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 have to escalate this quickly, and they're going to use war. They're going to use wah wah. They're going to use the new uh, white lung. They're going to use new, all this stuff. All of this. All of this to it's, control. It's just the everything all the time plan to wear everybody down all the while your taxes are going up your insurance is going up the cost of food is going up gasoline is probably going to be going up soon it's it's just everything 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 let's finish this article off because you like got, this you, word cj's using ludicrousness you you're gonna you're gonna love this mm. vegan eco-terrorists are angry that the ranchers are fighting back compared them to the tobacco industry quote it's no surprise that the meat industry, which is as shameless in its insatiable quest for profits as the tobacco industry, is pulling out all the stops in an attempt to dupe decision makers. What? You going to compare? Cattle ranchers, meat producers. And I'm, I'm to not, the tobacco industry. Yeah, and I'm not, even, I'm not even down in the tobacco industry. Uh, I'm just saying no. you... You, you, you have lost your mind if you think see, they're, they're the terrorists. They're the ones that go yes. up and destroy paintings and destroy buildings and glue themselves to all this kind of stuff. Where ranchers are saying, leave us alone. We want to we feed our cows. We want to yeah. drink milk and want to eat steak. I've said it before in our church. You know, God put cows here for two reasons, <laughs> glass of milk and a cheeseburger. I love them. They're cute animals. But they were not put here to be pets. They might be your pet. You may have a pet cow. I understand that. But cows are here by God to drink milk yes. and eat cheeseburgers. Yes. Or a steak. That's why they're here. And we're being a little funny here. We're being a little funny. But, but that's, come on. This is an encroachment into your life. This is trying to take control of every aspect of your life, from what you drive to what you eat to you know, where you live, how you live, if you're going to get to go to the doctor and have medical attention, everything. 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 And, yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Some, some of you that's new to it, oh, it's one of them fear-monger channels. No, this is a no. truth channel. It's just a truth channel. Yes. We don't tell you anything that's conspiracy. We tell you stuff that's true. These yes. are the things that are really happening, and they are really they really have an agenda tied to them. They're not yeah. just crazy, kooky people that want to do <clears throat> kooky policies. There is an agenda that is that they have for you and I. We are not going to be at the top of this food pyramid. Yep. Is, that, is that the way to say it? <laughs> okay. I mean, we 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 are 
We are not the ones that are going to be in the private jets when they outlaw flying. When, when we can't drive a gas-powered car, they will still be driving them. Do you understand what I'm saying? While we cannot eat meat, at the World Economic Forum last year in Davos, mm. they're having an entire conference. Part of that conference was about making you eat bugs instead of meat. And they're eating meat yep. while they're listening to the speaker. Exactly. We had pictures P- waiters snuck out and leaked pictures of them preparing meat exactly. for them to eat. They're sitting there carving their meat while they're plotting a policy to take it away from you. As we've said many times before, rules for thee, but not for me. And uh, it's just going to be more of the same. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's the Christmas holiday. Mm-hmm. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, that'll get you in trouble too. What in the world? Yep. In Canada, all our Canadian friends, I got two great articles for our Canadian friends tonight. Bless your heart. That's what we say down here in the South when we don't know what else to say. (laughs) We just say, bless your heart. Federal Commission declares Christmas holiday in Canada religious intolerance. The Canadian Human Rights Commission which wields broad quasi-judicial powers, argued that a day off on Christmas is discriminatory. Yeah. The Canadian Human Rights Commission, an agency with broad judicial powers, is fully funded by the federal government, has declared the celebration of Christmas is evidence of Canada's colonist religious intolerance. Colonialist. Colonial. Colonialist. Discrimination against religious minorities in Canada is grounded in Canada's history of colonialism. As an obvious example is statutory holidays in Canada. It adds, noting that the Christian holidays of Christmas and Easter get days off, while non-Christians have to request special accommodations to observe their holy days. (laughs) What? So, in other words, Muslims are mad that they have to not go to work for Christmas. (laughs) They want to work. One person in the article pointed out, well, are you going to complain that other countries like Iran does not give their people Christmas off and make Christians that might be in Iran or Christians that might be living in Gaza or Christians that might be living in another country that has uh, maybe a Hindu religion, they don't get Christmas off, but they might get a Hindu religious holiday off. But this is considered religious intolerance in Canada to celebrate Christmas. Mm, 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 mm. And they mock, look, look at this, they even show a government building decorated And they say that because it's decorated, it is harming people because it hurts their feelings. I hate it for these Canadians. They are experiencing so much craziness, basically. I mean, their country is becoming so liberal. They really had to go through it during the wah wah. Yep. And it's like it's not slowing down. It's like it's coming from even different places that we're not even having to deal with different things. We don't have to deal with here, but um, look at their leadership. I mean, yeah. And he's a disciple of the world. Exactly. He's a disciple. He's, he's literally a son to right. uh, um, To Klaus Schwab. But I think, is he the one that's some people believe is the actual son of Castro? Is he the one I've heard that? Many people believe that he is actually Fidel Castro's son. I've heard that. But, you know, his father was a politician before him, so he's following the footsteps of his father, who people believe to be his father. Um, And, of course, he's risen through the ranks. Of course, he was part of the global leaders from Klaus Schwab. And um, it's hard to believe where Canada is 
as opposed to where they were, say, 10, maybe even five years ago. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, Canada is the North American experiment to catapult North America's continent to the Agenda 2030. Uh, they knew they couldn't do it fully in America, although much has happened in America. But they, they had to start – think about how many things we, we've reported just since we've been doing this. Right. And even before we started, when we just followed it, that started in Canada and we'd shake our head and, well, that's just Canada and now it's in America. It's like Canada is the testing ground. Yeah, and this is a little off base of, um, okay, you're actually about to talk about this next. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right, you okay. Can, go, you can we go there? Yes, okay. let's do that. So so speaking <clears throat> of Canada, look at this. This is him. Yeah. Um, Canada is now euthanizing dozens of their citizens every day. Notice what's in the background there, World Economic Forum. Yes. Let me zoom this in a little bit. All right. Canada's far-left government is now euthanizing a staggering, a staggering average of 36 citizens every single day oh under the nation's assisted taking-your-own-life mm -hmm. law. Yep. As Slay News has reported, Canada has some of the most liberal euthanasia laws in the world. In recent years, the government has been increasingly relaxing the laws that were originally meant to give terminally ill people an option for dying. However, the expansion of the law means people can now be euthanized for less severe issues such as depression, homelessness, <laughs> or mental illness. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, we we I've read the article where people's like, I don't, I can't afford a house, so I'm ready to just go. And we talked about several months ago how the government was even <laughs> advising people, look, your yeah. health, your yeah, your health care costs are going to be a burden. this a burden yep. over the next years. You know. Do you, you really want to do that to your family? Do you really want to do that to your, your country to be yeah. a bird? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's just, wow. But look wow, at this. Wow. If you really want to cringe, the laws have been expanded <clears throat> to include mature minors with a push to expand to infants. A report has revealed that the average number of citizens being euthanized in Canada has soared in recent years. According to Health Canada's recent report on government assisted suicide, euthanasia made up 4.1% of all deaths nationwide um, last year. Unbelievable. And, you know, that's, that's just, just that's, a whisper away from genocide when you're, you're talking about minors and children and infants. Right now it's supposedly the individual's choice. Right. What if the government begins to say, you know, People that fall into this bracket, it's just a little bit too much. Yeah. It's just a little bit too burdensome on the economy of this country right. for us to reasonably think that we can take care of people that fall in this bracket. So true. So true. <laughs> I just, I can't, it's hard to believe that we're already here. It is. It's hard. And, and then what's really chilling is if we're already here. Where are we going to be in six months? Yeah. You know what we need? We need help. Yes, we do. We need to go watch our television show. I clicked the wrong thing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the Lord is saying what you need is to go watch our television. You need to watch the television <laughs> show. Right, okay. What I was really going to say is we need help from Jimmy. AI update. He looks so pretty in front of that blue background. Okay. Every time it comes up, I'm just like, okay. I hit the jackpot. Mm. I won the lottery. You just keep right on thinking that. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, so the city council of a Brazil Brazilian city has now been charged with using Chat GPT to write an ordinance on its own <clears throat> that has already been enforced on 1.3 million people. Wow. City Council in the southern city of Porto Alegre, Brazil, 
has enacted an ordinance that was written by ChatGPT and passed in October, but was revealed to have been created by artificial intelligence, wasn't revealed to be created by artificial intelligence until recently. The city councilman Ramiro Rosario revealed their use of AI in a statement to the Associated Press that he asked OpenAI's chatbot, ChatGPT, to craft a proposal to prevent the city from charging taxpayers to replace water consumption meters if they are stolen. He then presented it to his 35 peers on the council without making a single change and even letting them know about the unprecedented origin. If I had revealed it before, the proposal certainly wouldn't have been, been even had to vote. Uh, it would be unfair to the population to run the risk of the project not being approved simply because it was written by artificial intelligence. We're now, we're now justifying. We, it would be wrong for us to tell Jimmy AI that what they said was wrong. But Sandy, here's the part of the reason I put that article in there is it wasn't that, that a city councilman used chat GPT to say, write me an ordinance and include this and this and this. Mm-hmm. Just put a few words in there, let it completely generate it, didn't edit it at all, put it before the city council. They voted on it, and 1.3 million people had already had it enforced on them. That's the world we're coming to. It that's, is. that's what we try to prepare you for every week. That's what the world looks like when AI begins to take over things. Come on. Because, look, I've used ChatGPT <clears throat> to have it rewrite a few things and tweak some things and all this. And I'll be honest with you, I read it, and I'm like, that's good. <laughs> no. That's good. That's good. I mean, I, yeah, that's my stuff, but uh, they reworded it pretty good. He, that's, I don't think I would have done it that good. I mean, I can see where this is going. Okay, so let's talk about this. It would be bad enough if it stopped right there. But we talked last week yeah. about how in what year is China planning to have so many robots? It's in two years. Yeah, that's what I thought. Two years. Um, and we know we've been talking here this entire year about automation. Yes. Doing away with jobs. Absolutely. In an economy that's already in trouble while humans are still mostly working. Yep. What does the future really look like? Well, let me give you a preview. Okay. We are now experiencing already the death of journalism. Now, we are on another level. We already knew that. Yep. But we're talking about actual workers like yeah. you're talking about. Actual humans. Increasing number of newsrooms hardly have a single reporter. The new newspapers across the United States have the content may have the content, but do not have reporters to produce it. The mm-hmm. Wall Street Journal reported on the growth of ghost newsrooms across the United States that have no journalist and, quote, little to no on-the-ground presence in communities where they publish. The paper focused on a newspaper called The Gleaner in Henderson, Kentucky, which used to, used to house about 20 staffers. Its content is mainly produced by Gannett, its parent company and owner of USA Today. The Wall Street Journal said the paper relies on freelance work by a married couple for a few stories each month. But here's why I wanted to put that one on there to segue to this next one. Sports Illustrated this week, this is mind-boggling, gets caught publishing articles written by AI and fake authors, quickly deletes evidence when they're caught. We reached out with questions to the magazine's publisher, the Arena Group. All the AI-generated authors disappeared from Sports Illustrated's site without explanation. Now, what I want you to understand Mm. is these are not, Sandy, look at that. I'm going to scroll down. These are not just artificially AI-written articles. (laughs) They created fake people. That's not a real person. That's not a real human being. And credited them and gave them bios. Look at this guy here that wrote an article for Mm -hmm. Sports Illustrated. His name is Drew Ortiz. There's nothing in Drew Ortiz's author biography at Sports Illustrated to suggest 
that he was anything other than human. This is what it says about Drew. Drew has spent much of his life outdoors and is excited to guide you through his never-ending list of the best products to keep you from falling to the perils of nature. Nowadays, there is rarely a weekend that goes by where Drew isn't out camping, hiking, or just back on his parents' farm. The only problem? <laughs> it's unbelievable. Outside of Sports Illustrated, Drew Ortiz doesn't seem to exist. He has no social media presence, no publishing history, and even more strangely, his profile photo on Sports Illustrated is for sale on a website that sells AI-generated headshots where he's described as a neutral, white, young adult male with short brown hair and blue eyes. Look, that's the Sports Illustrated bio at top, and there's the for sale AI-generated image Ugh. of Ortiz. But he isn't the only AI-generated author published by Sports Illustrated. It goes on to say that there was other ones, and I'm going to get down here to her. If I can get down to her, I think she's here. Where's she at? There she is. She's also a reporter. Uh, her name is Tanaka. She wrote an entire article for Sports Illustrated as well, and she does not exist either. And that's her picture for sale on an AI-generated facial site. What in the world is going on with this story? Okay, look. This is real. Okay. I, I think there's a... Oh, God. There's something else going on. They wouldn't be so lazy as to not have covered those bases. So did they... It's like they wanted this to leak out and for people to know something. I think they're preparing us for the future. I think they're preparing this is a, us this for is the This is another future. website called The Street. Yeah. And there's there's their author. Okay, he's a guy. His name's Denise. Yeah. That okay. tells you something right there. Denise McNamara, he's an information analyst for The Street, but he's not real. He... He has he come from one of those sites as well. So I think you're right, Sandy. I think what it, I think what <clears> this <throat> is 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 just a quick rollout to prepare you. Yeah. Hey, listen, it still was a good article, still helped you, still had good information. Maybe it wasn't from a human being that wrote it. Maybe it was a computer generated image. Maybe, so what? But it was still good stuff. So look. They're still quality. You're still getting quality writing. Don't worry about Rick not actually being on the farm or actually being real. Yeah. And camping. <laughs> he's always found camping once a week or he's on his daddy's farm. <sighs> yet. But yet. On he's, that fictional tractor. He's Hal. Mm. Hal 3000. Is that, right? is that what it is? Dave. Dave. Why do I keep calling him? Hal is the computer. Hal's the computer. Dave is the one that he goes, Dave. 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 I'm a writer for Sports Illustrated, Dave. Mm -hmm. You love to read Sports Illustrated. Right. Dave, you can't touch me. You can't come see me in my office. But look at me. I'm real. Look at me. Can I, can I say something to you to help you? This is real. This is real. Look, look at that AI technology. I can transport myself where my wife is all the way over there. Yes. Real, real, real. That was AI technology. Mm. Oh, my goodness. All right. So we're almost through. We're almost through. I got, I, when, this last one I'm going to show you. I've got, I've got a video I'm going to show you all that's going to blow your mind. How AI is about to change our relationship with our phones forever. This is interesting. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, let me zoom it out just a little <clears throat> bit more so we can read this. Great leaps forward in technology means the future is coming uh, fast and about to forever change our, the most important relationships that we have in our life. What's the most important relationship we have in our life? The one we have with our smartphone. Of course. That is the view <laughs> of Cristiano Amon, the chief executive of Qualcomm, very powerful tech company, the tech giant that produces the processors powering almost every phone in the world, bar the iPhone, as well as laptops and VR headsets. Uh, these new bes bespoke chips will not just be about making your phone faster or adding new experiences. He suggests instead 
they will fundamentally change how we use our devices through artificial intelligence. Mm. Future devices might know that your car is out of service and go ahead and call you a cab, for instance, without you even asking. Or they might summarize videos without you ever having to watch them. Well, what fun is that? (laughs) If I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see a video I want to watch, (laughs) do I want AI going, now look, you don't really need to watch this video because this is what it's about. And I'm like, okay, thank you, AI. What about this one? What about this one? I'll never know, watch another video again. I don't like this technology. Mm-mm. So so they're go- basically what he's saying is going to predict. Let's go back to that movie, Minority Report, right? Is that the one? We always forget the name that, that predicted crimes. Yes. Is that what it was? Pre-crime. Pre-crime. Um, so they're, they're predicting. This is not things. just, to me, this is not just predictive. This is m- Totally making decisions for you, right? Well, well, that's what it is, Sandy. Because it's what what, what AGI <laughs> is the term that you that we're about artificial to, general intelligence. General intelligence that is sentience. That is when they become human, and that's what I'm going to show you. Don't go anywhere because that, I'm going to show you a video that's going to show you exactly why Sam Altman was fired from OpenAI. Oh AI yeah, I wanted brought, to talk about that. I'm glad you're going to yeah, be showing that video because we need to get dive deeper into that discussion. But the last thing I want to show you is this. We might make two hours tonight. Uh, general AI is what we're talking about is the is enabling this era. It's enabling this era. So so there's there's this Certainly. belief that AGI is here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fast forward to this one right here. But one last time, I got one more thing to show you. It's a video, yes. and then we'll we'll be going for the night. Just want to remind you one more time: if you haven't already done it, go to our website LarryRaglan.com, and you when you get there, you can click on LarryRaglan.tv. Any of these tabs at the top. But .tv has got everything there. Uh, it's got previous shows. It's got a way that you can become partners with us if you'd like. One-time gift, become a monthly partner. You can read our article on the Epic Times. You can watch all 13 of our season one of our television program, get a copy of our book, uh, go to our merchandise store, get you a sweatshirt for the winter, get you a hat. we got Boggins. Uh, you can connect with all our social media, join our email list. All of that is on one page, LarryRagland.tv. So all you got to do is go there. All right, Sandy, so this last thing is we're going to play this mm. video. Okay. And uh, it is about what happened. Sam Altman, the co-founder and the CEO of OpenAI, which created what is known as ChatGPT, right. which really made AI a, a household term, Right. Um, <clears throat> was abruptly fired just out of nowhere. He was fired. And then Microsoft hired him in less than 24 hours. And then something got worked out and he came back to open AI with Microsoft having major board influence and a whole new board. Well, I want you to watch a little bit of this video here because it breaks down a little bit about what happened because it is something called Q star. You're going to hear a lot about that on this show and other shows. If you, on your own YouTube and other places, Q star. And it's not spelled out. It's the letter Q and an asterisk, and it's called Q star. All right, right, so let's listen to what what is Q star. Is the AI breakthrough that almost killed OpenAI. It was frightening enough for lead OpenAI researchers to write a letter of concern to the board, which likely precipitated the firing of Sam Altman. But here's the thing, only a handful of people within OpenAI know exactly what QSTAR is. Since bits and pieces of information about QSTAR have leaked online, an army of internet sleuths, including AI researchers, practitioners, hobbyists like myself, have been trying to figure out what exactly is QSTAR. Q-Star. I've been scouring the internet for every bit of information that I can find about QSTAR. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first, let's look what led up to the leak of QSTAR. Check out these videos from a few weeks ago before Sam Altman was fired, where he discusses being in the room where a major AI breakthrough has occurred. And on a personal note, um, like four times now in the history of OpenAI, the, the most recent time was just in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten to be in the room um, when we sort of like push the front, the sort of the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward. And getting to do that is like the professional honor of a lifetime. I think there's a real moment of fear, which is like, is this a tool we've built or a creature we've built? 
So those are pretty interesting videos from just a couple weeks ago. In one, he's talking about him being in the room where a massive discovery has happened that gives us a giant leap forward in artificial intelligence. And in the other one, he's talking about whether one of these creations is a tool or a creature that they've created. <sighs> Shortly after these talks, Sam Altman was unceremoniously fired from OpenAI before a crazy weekend of back and forth infighting between Sam Altman the board, and the employee base. To this day, we still don't know exactly why Sam Altman was fired, but it does seem to be related to the discovery of QSTAR and his desire to commercialize it versus the board's desire to slow down and figure out the safety first. I'm not gonna go too deep into the news around the firing and what happened because I already created multiple videos about it. I'll link all of those in the description below. But one thing we do know is the OpenAI board and at least some of its top researchers were so scared about this discovery that they were willing to shut down the company because they still believed it was in line with their mission to create AGI in a safe way. So they were willing to literally squander billions of dollars of value because they thought that was a better outcome than releasing this technology. And if that wow. doesn't scare you just a little bit, I don't know what will. And then suddenly we started hearing rumblings about QSTAR, which seems to have confirmed the rumor that this is the AI breakthrough that might be the prelude to AGI. Let's take a look at this article by Reuters. So this is a really important article. OpenAI researchers warned board of AI breakthrough ahead of CEO Ouster, sources say. And let's read a few excerpts from it. Ahead of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman's four days in exile, several staff researchers wrote a letter to the board of directors warning of a powerful artificial intelligence discovery that they said could threaten humanity, two people familiar with the matter told Reuters. The sources cited the letter as one factor among a longer list of grievances by the board leading to Altman's firing, among which were concerns over commercializing advances before understanding the consequences. Now, Reuters was unable to see... I'm gonna stop it. And <clears throat> so, so basically, something scared them to death. Yeah. They, they saw something. And they wanted to hold it back. They wanted to hold it back. They didn't want to release it at the risk of, what did he say, squandering billions of dollars, not being able to make this money. But Sam Altman wanted to release it. Yep. They fired him. Yep. But yet he comes back now even stronger and more, more powerful, powerful than ever. Yep. Basically a coup that involves Bill Gates, Bill Gates and Microsoft. Microsoft. Yep. Because guess what? Bill Gates and Sam Altman are probably of the same mind and thinking. And whatever this thing is, yep. they want to release it onto the world. And think about this. So Chat GPT, the way it was, what QSTAR is explaining and the way AGI, this is the infant stage of AGI with QSTAR, is that they're saying that before QSTAR, Chat GPT was a master at predicting relatively accurate things to say to you. In other words, like you in, in rewriting things, rewording things, going to the internet, quickly grabbing information, developing outlines, how things would flow in text. And, and, and if you've used ChatGPT, and I've used it, if you've used it, you know a lot of times it's extremely accurate, but sometimes it's not because it's assuming things that it don't have a lot of context on. So it's like you, you can ask it to, to uh, write me an article about, um, get, give me, a, a lot of preachers are doing this. By the way, preachers don't do this. Write me a sermon for Sunday. Yeah. I mean, they'll just say, write me a sermon for Sunday. And, and ChatGPT will write an entire sermon. A and lot of students are using it too, aren't they? They are. They are. The difference with QSTAR is this. What happened in that room was that this system, this program called QSTAR, learned on its own or was able to do on its own elementary grade math. That's what QSTAR is. And, and what scared them and what they real, what made them say, and many people are saying, this is the beginning of them understanding that AI is now probably already or about to achieve AGI. Artificial general intelligence, which is the same as, as the human mind intelligence, what that means, is that there is only one right answer in math. Do you understand? 
That's what scared them because you you can talk your way into multiple things and tell it, well, no, make it this, make it this, and keep adjusting it to get it to where you like. Mm -hmm. But two plus two is four. And they they gave OpenAI's engine, artificial intelligence, math problems that they did not teach that machine how to to com uh, in his mind to uh, compute yep. and age and, it, and, it, and that artificial intelligence solved the math problems on elementary level. And people say, well, it's just elementary level. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It can learn. Two plus two is four. And when you understand two digits plus two digits equals four digits, yep. you are learning on your own. And that's what scared them to death because they realized yeah. if it can do math and get it right, it can do anything. That's what happens. Eddie. Look out. Um, so I'll add this to the mix. I believe this past week, for all of you who listen to Mike from around the world, he referred to this as an infant and an elder. Wow. Wow. And that kind of messed me up a little bit. Wow. That's pretty powerful. Yeah. I, did, I missed that show. I didn't hear that. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Well, uh, it's good to see you back feeling better and uh, getting on here. And <sighs> I'm uh, almost completely back. So look out, world. Look out, world. Boom. No, no. What you <clears throat> need to do is pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's you need you prayer need. anyway. So I do need prayer. All right. I love you, babe. It was good. It was a good show. You. It was a good show. We we almost made it two hours again. We hadn't done we two hours in a while. I'm not guaranteeing that. <laughs> <laughs> this was just a special night tonight. Yes. We love you all. Thank you for watch, watching us. If you hadn't already, smash the like button. Do it now. Smash Please. that like button. Click the subscribe. Share this broadcast. Share our channel. Yep. Let's build the big picture family because that's what it's all about. We love you. We love you. We love you. There ain't no doubt about it. And we always want to remind you, we ain't woke, mm -mm. but we are certainly, certainly awake. awake. See you next time.